Um, what if you desire something that you can't have? It's impossible. <laughs> Unless you think you need something that you're not seeing you already have access to. Is it a genuine inspiration? Does it fill you with joy? Yes. Okay, then you can have it. But I can't. <laughs> oh, you can. I, okay, well, let me ask this question. Why do people fall in love with people who aren't in love with them? Well, what's the essence that they represent to you? Joy. Great. So what you want is joy. Yeah. Screw the package. Oh, okay. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it then. Thank you. <laughs> What you want, sometimes we don't realize exactly what we want, but we can always have exactly what it is we actually want. So you've got to also be free enough to not be insistent upon what it looks like. Sometimes we think it looks like this dude, but it might just be, it might not be a dude, or it might be another dude, but <laughs> this dude represents something to you that triggers an emotional response of inspiration, of excitement. So it's the essence of that symbol that you desire, not necessarily the symbol. So oftentimes we'll attract, not always, but oftentimes we'll attract in our lives at certain points an experience where we are really enticed by the package it comes in, the form that it comes in, the symbol, and we are then given the opportunity to start recognizing ourselves and our inspirations at a deeper level by actually not being given by our higher minds, not being given what we think we want, so that we'll actually explore a little more of what it is that we actually desire, which is the essence of that. For instance, joy. For instance, true connection. And then when we start to find these essences that these symbols represent to us in ourselves, then we will attract symbols, and then our higher minds will allow us to attract symbols that we actually desire, because now we're no longer misplacing. We're no longer misguided. So your higher mind will not continue to feed your misguided assumptions because that would not be of service to you. So it's a loving act for that person to not want to be with you. Does that make sense? If you can truly understand that and find the essence inside yourself, find the frequency that they represent and activate that in your field, then that activation will naturally attract something to you that is a true representation of your joy. And it will probably be even better. Maybe he gets out of his relationship or suddenly he does want to be with you or she. Um, but it oftentimes also it simply is another being, another person, another form or package that it comes in. But first you are asked to realize what it is you truly desire and embody that within yourself. Because you can only attract what you're the vibration of. That's why oftentimes when people seem out of your league, they actually are because you're not yet at the vibration that they represent to you. Does that make sense? That's why it's like, oh, why can I not get the hottest chick in high school, or why can't I not get the quarterback, in, whatever. It's, that's a simple physical uh, metaphor for, um, like you're putting that on a pedestal, so they represent to you a frequency that you idolize, but you feel like you're lacking it. That's why you crave it so much, right? But it's precisely that symbol that allows you to find that in yourself, and when you do, then suddenly it will feel like it's on equal grounds, and it will come to you. So you literally will not allow, except for glimpses perhaps, just to give you a taste of something. But you'll not be allowed or you'll not allow yourself to be with the people that you still see as above yourself or more beautiful than you are or out of your league or representing more joy than you, than you are. As soon as there is too much idolization, um, like if I, if I wanted to be in a relationship with someone, I could never be, I find that there was always this struggle to be in a relationship with the person I actually want to be in because there was way too much projection onto them. I was saying that I'm not that yet, vibrationally, basically. And if I'm not that yet, vibrationally, then these people will not be allowed to become, like, share some kind of a partnership with you. So, uh, and I, I think many people has, have experienced this, that they can only be in relationships with, with people that they are maybe not even super fond of, or it's not their first choice in some ways. But, <laughs> which is a bit of a tease, it's a bit annoying, but if you, if, you get, if you get the principle that it's all vibrational in nature, 
and you can start to embody these principles, then you will actually start attracting partnerships that are more and more and more beautiful, more and more holistic, more and more in alignment with who you are. But first, it needs to be here. So whatever he or she represents to you, integrate that, become that. Find that here, feel it here, feel it now. Be able to activate it, that will. And when you are, and when you master that, and when you feel of yourself as you feel of them, then an opening is allowed. Does that make sense? Yeah, and same with things, or same with experiences, same with spiritual realizations. As long as you say about enlightenment that it's up there and not for you, well, forget about realizing what you want to realize. That's why you have to realize that realizations are not things that you get. Enlightenment is not something you go to and then it becomes yours. It's what you choose to perceive. It's right inside of yourself. If you want to be enlightened what, according to your image of enlightenment, simply tune into the realization that you have equated with enlightenment and activate it here now. Become it. Oh, that was easy. I didn't have to leave myself at all. I just activated that state of consciousness. Easy. It's all inside of your consciousness, you see. Everything that can ever possibly be can be activated right here, right now. That was my main struggle with my own teachers that I sort of explored with, um, like yoga teachers, meditation teachers, that kind of stuff. I never really got to a teacher that I was like, yes, this is awesome, because I had never resonated with their assumptions about it being something at the end of some kind of a line of struggle or work. So I never bought into that. Vibrationally, it just didn't feel good. So I followed my own resonance instead and ended up realizing that everything is a choice inside of my own consciousness. And it made things very easy. Same with things, same with people, same with whatever you desire, same with your dreams, same with your business's success, same with reaching a lot of people with your work or whatever it is. Does that answer your question, dear? Yeah, thank you. Cool. Yeah. And I was, I was that person all the time. Like I could never, I was in love with the same person for like years always. But I could never, like I would always have this play, like I would be best friends with them, you know. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like all of primary school and then all of high school was just the same one person, but there was never that reciprocation because... I was projecting. I was, not, I was not the confident guy that embodied that energy. It was like, oh, that was out of my league.